Okay, welcome everybody. Uh, back here, I think this is episode 28. We are back here with Mike Schwartz from High Tech Minerals out of Australia. We are going to have an update here with Mike's Lacroma Graphite Project, pardon me, in South Australia on the Air Peninsula. We had an I interviewed Mike back in January with a little bit of an introduction to High Tech, and here we are. There's been some exciting news, and we're in the middle of more exciting news here. So I thought this would be an opportune moment for Mike to come and join me again. Mike, yeah, thank you. I appreciate you taking your time to be back here with me. How are you today? Yeah, I'm really well, thanks, Matt, and thanks for having me back on. So we're going to discuss, uh, excuse me, we're going to discuss your sugar loaf. There's been some some results from your sugar loaf uh, project, and then also your Lacroma project, which is on which is ongoing right now. Uh, but before, I guess prior to us discussing meters and assays and, and you know graphite percentages, could you just maybe just lay the foundation for us here? Could you just give a general baseline rule of thumb for you know if if we're looking at a graphite project? What is a commercial quantity, like a commercial width with, with a commercial percentage? What, are, what should the market be looking at as, you know, commercial numbers in that regard? Sure. So um, what it comes down to and what everybody seems to refer to is in any operation, if you produce about 50,000 tonnes per annum of graphite concentrate, so that's at about, you know, above 90%, um, 94, 95%. Um, that seems to be like a standard unit for an operation of something that is significant in the marketplace. So um, there are you know, other operations that are looking at 120, 130, um, that are looking at being relatively large. But as we're classifying each deposit, we're looking um, about what sort of time frame and what ability it has to produce 50,000 tonnes of concentrate um, per annum. Okay. And I guess that, yeah, so maybe a follow-up question then in terms of just maybe a low-grade versus high-grade graphite percentages, is that something that we can measure reliably that can be kind of cross-referenced reliably? Yeah, look, I would say um, for a deposit that runs between 7 and 10%, that would be about a 40 million ton deposit. That would give you a mine life that would be long enough, say, 30 to 40 years. Um, that would justify that capital expenditure. So, yeah, 40 million tonnes at between 7 to 10% is what you want to have a look at it, be looking for in ground. Perfect. No, thank you. Just just as a, as a benchmark for us, for anybody listening in for graphite, right? Um, so with that context now, right, I'm going to assume that people who are listening to this are familiar with your story. You've been releasing results from your, your Sugarloaf project. Maybe do you want to run us through just, I mean, just give us some highlights uh, in terms of meters and the percentage from your RC assays. Yeah, sure. So um, we drilled 17 holes um, and about, I think, 15 of those hit significant graphite intersections. Um, now, as is often the way, the last hole had probably one of the best intersections. In the <laughs> we got 27 metres at 7.7%. That was just from eight metre steps. So we're showing this stuff's quite close to surface. But then down a bit deeper, we got 13 metres at 26%. So, you know, it, it's getting nice high grade lenses and, and um, horizons within that system. Um, some of the other ones that I really like, num hole number 11, which is right in the middle, that got 48 metres at 7.2 from just five hmm. metres near surface. Hmm. And down a bit deeper, 49 metres at 16%. So these are nice thick intervals at quite nice grades. Um, look, if I had to summarize the whole Sugarloaf system, which is about 4.3 Ks long, I would say we have a horizon. It's about 40 meters thick, grading on average about 10% over that 4.3 kilometers. Now, there'll be some breakups and jogs in that system. Um, but from what we're seeing so far, I think that's a reasonable average to, to say that we've got across the system. Mm -hmm. And nice and shallow, like you say, just a few meters at times from surface. So yeah, em em eminently mineable if you can get the met figured out, right? So I guess maybe, you know, follow up question then is, what do these results tell you about Sugarloaf? Is this kind of confirming what you knew already or is this exceeding what you're hoping for? Where, where does this fall in? What, what, what story does this tell us or tell, you know, investors about what, what you have here? Sure. Well, I think it's, it's backing up the story that we put out there. So we put out an expiration target of about 158 to 264 million tonnes at anywhere between 7 and 12%. So these kind of results are fitting right in the middle of that. Mm -hmm. um, and we'll, we'll you know, um, build that up. So I think on the, the results we've got so far, it's definitely not unreasonable to say um, you know, 40 million tonnes is a good target in the first instance, um, which is you know the, the, the ballpark that we're, we're trying to get. Um, and you know, at, at grades from surface down to about um, 100 metres. So... Um, yeah, it, it's looking very encouraging uh, for Sugarloaf. What we don't know is the, the metallurgy, though, 
we have had a go at it. We sent a sample over to ANZA plan uh, and we asked them to run that through the process that we established for our other deposit at, at Camp Hoona. And it, um, in the initial stages, it, it showed us that that um, process wasn't going to work for Sugarloaf. So it's a lot finer and we need to work out Maybe um, we're looking at like a, a side process in that flow sheet that we might be able to run the sugar loaf material through. So there's there's some more work to be done around the metallurgy. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, for any, you know, as this is a quick review, you kind of have a you have a deposit of sugar loaf in need of met work, and then you've got some met work from the chroma that you have an understanding of what's down there, but you need the deposit, right? So you, in regards to sugar loaf, I think because you have these exciting intervals that, that you're releasing, but people understand that there's you know some work to be done with Anza plan. Can you just kind of highlight where are you at in that process, right? I mean, there's some questions online that I'm sure you've seen. You know that you, this has been ongoing for a couple of years now, right? I think there was 600 kilograms sent there in Q4 of 2021. More this past year, year end 2022. Can you just run through? I mean, is this just a matter of you know? A, a variety of different met analysis programs that are happening that you just need more samples from, or, or why is there a kind of a continuing need for more core sampling for ANZA plan to do their work? Yeah, sure. So um, what, what you'll see with a lot of projects uh, companies do is they take a composite of sample um, that they think represents their first few years of mining and they'll put that in for, for met test work. And if they can concentrate it to 94% with, you know, greater than 80% recoveries, um, then that's you know, going to make the project look as though it could go ahead. Um, but then you have a second stage of metallurgy after that, which is where you need to spherinize it and purify it if you're going to put that material into the uh, battery anode material. Um, so th that's, you know, th there's two stages to the, to the MET process. Uh, what we did with uh, Campuna was we knew that that concentrate could be produced, but we because we acquired the project from another company, we wanted to redo that ourselves. So hence back in 2021, we took a mm. bulk sample. So this is going from bench top scale testing to semi-industrial scales. We wanted to move to that next level. Um, so we, we did that. We produced that concentrate readily through a nice, easy process. And then we went the extra step with Campuna and we uh, spherinized it and purified it and made a nice battery anode material that met all the requirements. Now that's for one location where we might start mining for the first few years. Now, what you don't want to happen is to go to another location like Sugarloaf or, say, La Croma and have that metallurgy not, that process not work. Mm -hmm. So you need to repeat these processes again and again for wherever you think you have variability that might affect the process. So one met sample is not enough. You've got to do it again and again and again for wherever you think you have um have you know issues that might might come up because you don't want to be mining five years down the track and all of a sudden your whole flow sheet falls apart. You want to you want to predict that and you want to be able to adjust for it. Yeah, absolutely. So I guess curiosity here then, and you know, if it's off the top of your head, if you can, but I guess how many drill holes are there, historical or otherwise, you know, that you and that you have done yourself as well? Where how many how many drill holes are there from sugar loaf that have been sent off for network? Just curious about how much involvement there is. Sure. So we made a composite of um, I think it was two or three diamond holes and I think there was some RC material in there as well um, that was in the northern part of the prospect so the top two kilometers of the 4.3 um, and what we so we were working from the premise that it wasn't even crystalline flat graphite that it was some other material that's what the previous company had said so the first step was to say let's grind this up let's try and concentrate it and see what the material is and the positive that came out of it was that it it's a nice fine flat crystalline graphite so potentially it should be able to make good battery anode material we just need to be able to concentrate that up to 94%. Um, so th that's the process we're working on at the moment. So ANZA plan had a go at putting it through the, the standard process and that didn't work too well. What we're doing now is we're looking at using one of our local universities and some um, hmm. companies here in Australia that are going to do quite a large scale metallurgical pro uh, project to, to work that out. So we've essentially reset the metallurgy at Sugarloaf. We're starting from scratch again. Now that we have good sample and lots of it, and we have it over a large enough distance that we can check on any variability for that system. So Perfect. the first step will be to make it work at one location and then to repeat that again and again over Fugalove to make it work up and down that whole whole system. No, excellent. I mean, that, that's that sort of methodical approach that you have to have, right? Otherwise, like you say, five years down the line, you have to suddenly shutter your doors because you're coming across unforeseen issues, right? So I guess I'm just curious here. So, I mean, are you working still with ANZA plan concurrently with your Australian university and other Australian 
met workers or what's that happening? Yeah, so, so what Anzapan said to us um, when we gave them the sugar loaf material and they said, well, it doesn't go through the campaign flow sheet as it is. We need to do some modifications to make that work. So we thought, well, let's do that here in Australia where we can keep a close eye on it. And in the meantime, we've got Lacroma to work on, which is our other project. Now, we've got high hopes for Lacroma. We think it could easily be as big as Sugarloaf. Um, you know, it's got all the, the right dimensions to it. And our initial drilling is backing that up as well. And we can see a difference in the sample that's coming out of the ground at Lacroma. And we know we can see fine flake graphite with our, you know, when we look at it, it, it looks different. Um, and there has been metallurgy done on that. Um, the first step to produce a concentrate. And that worked exactly the same as Campuna did. So we know there's a high chance that that will go through our existing flow sheet. So once now, now that we've drilled um, some sample at Lacroma and that, that drilling is ongoing, um, we're going to be sending that over to ANZA plan and they that it will readily go through the Campuna, Campuna flow sheet, or we believe so. So um, yeah. that's the kind of material they are comfortable working with and that they won't have to mod modify the existing flow sheet with. So that, that's the plan for Lacroma. Perfect. No, thank you. And I think that, you know, I think you're right. I mean, you, you released last week some very, you know, the headline numbers from, from Sugarloaf were very strong. I, mean, I think they're just a bit of a teaser, right? I mean, the, mar the market responded pretty well. I think you had an 8% 8, 8 day or a 10% day. But I think that, you know, and I don't think it's unreasonable. People are either waiting on a successful Sugarloaf network or a Lacroma discovery for that that true re-rating that we're here for, right? And so I guess maybe for, for the question, I think we touched on this last interview, but just for, for the sake of the conversation, you know, how closely in terms of geophys anomalies and your ability to infer and interpret based on sugar loaf, how closely analogous is sugar loaf with the chroma or vice versa, I suppose, right? I mean, now based on what you understand subsurface from sugar loaf, how confident are you to, to translate that over to these new targets? Well, we, we've really built our confidence up now. I think our graphite intersections that we had planned on Sugarloaf, so we got 15 out of 17 holes with significant intersections mm -hmm. in them. Uh, it took those first few holes to to figure out where we had to adjust our, our drill holes, and then we started nailing it quite regularly. Um, we've taken that up to Lacroma and our first drill hole straight into that graphite horizon. Um, so we've drilled about 16 uh, drill holes 25 meters apart when we've done nice resolution so close resolution doing these holes 25 meters apart so that we can mm. work out what the the stratigraphies or the changes are in uh, across this this strike so that when we go to drill a, a kilometer away which is where we're starting today um, we're going a kilometer to the south we know from the first time exactly where we are in that horizon uh, and we can start you know saving drill holes and, and having more efficient drilling so yeah what, what we found at the chroma there was an existing drill hole uh, there that got about 60 metres at 6.8%, which is um, quite a nice intersection. And there was an interval of about 20 metres above 10% in that drill hole. We've uh, drilled across that at 25 metre uh, spacings, and it, you know, it, it extends for over 200 metres um, to this graphite horizon of that, that kind of material. Um, so, yeah, we're very, very pleased um, that we've been able to replicate that hole and then you know show that it's a, it's a nice um, horizon along there. Now, extrapolating from Sugarloaf, as you said, that anomaly, um, the EM anomaly that we based our Sugarloaf drilling on, that goes for at least 4Ks north and south of Lacroma. So we're hoping to get that kind of material along that horizon. Now, geology always throws furfies out there. You know, it, it can uh, make it a bit difficult, but we'll, we'll know... Uh, from this next horizon, um, this next location a kilometre away that we're drilling today, uh, how uh, repeatable that horizon is along a long strike. And as I asked you this off air. I mean, your RC drilling, obviously, you don't have that beautiful core coming out of the ground. I, I know that with gold, I've seen companies that would pan for visible gold out of their RC uh, after the fact. Uh, and you had mentioned that there is, you know, while it's not, you, you don't have that nice, gorgeous core to stare at, but I mean, you, you do get a sense from, from the RC drilling on the ground. You know, there, there are visual cues uh, about what's coming out of the ground. That's a fair statement, eh? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So we've developed a number of techniques, you know, as, as many other companies have the geos on the ground, develop their little tricks to, to see whether there's graphite in it. One of the things we do is we get the powder that comes out of the ground along with the chips from RC drilling, and you, you float that on water and graphite floats, and you'll hmm. see nicely whether it's got graphite in it that, that it's floating on the top of a, a bucket of water and say all right well that's you know, definitely got graphite in it for, for that location a bit harder to, to tell how much but um it definitely gives you a, a good indicator so you know we're quite confident now with our ability when we see it visually um to say that there's you know material that's worth chasing up in those holes and so far so good at lacroma things are looking good on the ground in, informal though that is 
Yeah, yeah. So, um, look, we've got um, the first, I think it's about uh, 12 or 13 holes in at the labs at the moment. Um, I would, I'm watching them go through the system online um, quite eagerly. Uh, we just got those whole bunch of sugarloaf uh, assays dropped, but there won't be quite the lag with the chroma. They're coming on now, so the, the graphite analyses are getting done for the first few holes as we speak. So I would hope in the next um, two at the outset three weeks to have those first assays from the chroma. Perfect. You're anticipating questions of mine here. Yeah. So it it was roughly a two month turnaround from commencement commencement. Pardon me of drilling at Sugarloaf to first results from Sugarloaf. We're roughly four weeks from from the time that you initiated drilling at Lacroma. You're saying maybe two to three weeks before we start seeing initial results at that point. Yeah. So at Sugarloaf, we were it was a brand new drilling program for the year. We had to set everything up, get our systems in place. Mm. You know, the, the logistics, the transport to get it to the labs, that was all in place for Lacroma. So, um, yeah, we, we would, you know, hope to cut that uh, initial assay time down by at least a week to two weeks. So, yeah, from what I'm seeing in uh, online with the, the samples going through, at the outset it'll be about three weeks, um, hopefully two, uh, before we get those first assays in. Yeah, exciting. So not long, eh? Yeah. Um so you mentioned you have 12 or 13 off the lab. How many have you completed? Well, you know, how many are you anticipating? I mean, we'll just start there. I have a follow-up question, but yeah. So where are you at in your drill campaign on the Corolla? Yep. So we, the, um, we've done the first traverse, which is probably about 300 meters uh, with 16 drill holes in it. Um, and we averaged about 25 meters apart. Um, the, the ones on the extremities didn't get much graphite in them. The ones over about 200 meters got varying graphite intervals, some of them quite nice and thick. Um, so we prioritised those ones to go into into the lab. Uh, so we had 94 holes planned for Lacroma, 16 done so far. So the remainder still have to be drilled, and we plan on, on drilling that. So we've got, um, I would say, in excess of four kilometres of of north south strike to drill out. So that's a lot of drill holes on these traverses. Now, mm -hmm. as we get more and more confident where this horizon lies to the north and south, we should be able to cut down the holes on the, the east west side. Um, and we should be able to make that drilling more efficient. But uh, at the moment, you know, I would say we, we've still got something like about um, eight and a half thousand metres to drill and, you know, and, and another uh, in the order of 78, 79 drill holes to go. But, you know, that'll change as we as we work out what the dimensions of the, the graphite mineralisation you know, turn out to be. Yeah, so it's setting up to be an exciting couple of months here if we keep seeing strong results. That's kind of a, always, you know, the market always likes to see those consistent returns or eight or consistent assays. Um, I mean, you kind of asked this already for me, but there is a there is flexibility, obviously, right? I mean, if you like what you see, the market or the investors can anticipate there being, you know, increased drill holes down there. Yeah, look, so um, again, it, we, we've got to uh, adjust our drilling program based on our ability to predict the geology and predict where the graphite horizon goes. So as we get better uh, at doing that, we can drill less holes for the same result. Um, we get less and less duds. Um, so we'll manage that as we go forward. Um, I would, my aim is by the end of the year to have an inferred resource out of the chroma. Um, you know, all going well, that should be achievable. Uh, but in, in the meantime, um, we'll work out how much infill drilling we need to do over the best areas to um, improve the confidence of the resource and take that to indicated and measured. So um, we'll be making that judgment call probably towards the end of this initial program. And if it's all looking really good, we would probably want to keep going, I would say, um, and bring mm. that resource definition to, to greater and greater degrees of confidence. Mm -hmm. Well, that's one thing that I, I always like hearing about methodical approaches to drilling and not just kind of willy-nilly throwing darts at the board sort of thing, because it does set you up nicely for that that resource upgrading, right? That it, it makes it for efficient use of your of your meters and your money when it comes to that sort of thing. So, I, yeah, I like I like the sound of that as well. Um, Mrs. I think you kind of already kind of cleaned this one up for me, but it, you will be you will be releasing results as you get them. You won't, you obviously won't be waiting till the end to get 90 to release 95 or a hundred all at once. You'll be releasing these in batches of a dozen or 18 or so at a time as they come back from the lab. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, you know, I, I think that's, um, a good way to go. It, I really like taking investors along on the journey with us as we get the results, you know, them to see them shortly after as, as we've been able to present them in a, a coherent way. So we kind of need that, the batches of 10 to 20 drill holes to make mm. it worthwhile. You can see mm -hmm. then how the 
um, the mineralization is evolving uh, if there's enough to report at any particular time. But our, definitely our approach is to uh, re release them incrementally as we get them. Mm -hmm. And where are they going? Where, where's the lab for you guys? Uh, Intertech, which is a um, uh, lab based here in Australia. I mean, they're global, but um, we're, they've actually got an office in the same building that we work. <laughs> um, they're not getting online here, but the sample prep's done here in Adelaide in South Australia. Um, <laughs> and so, yeah, they're very local, um, you know, and they've, they've been pretty good so far. They've had, considering that we're sort of coming off of a big demand for for, um, for assays, um, when a lot of money was raised over the last few years, they've actually had pretty good turnaround time. So we've been mm -hmm. very happy with them. No, awesome, Mike. So maybe just a couple of follow-up questions here, then I'll leave the last word to you. So in terms of sugar loaf, is there an expectation around timing? When you know, when, when do when do you think we would know or the market will find out about success or, or you know or struggles in terms of, of where that's at with its network? Yeah, so sugar loaf is going to be a bit longer term project. We have really hit reset on that metallurgical test work. Um, as I said, you know, we've got a local uni that has a really good metallurgy lab uh, and some of the commercial labs here working on that because we think if we can get that met right, that can add a lot of value to our, our graphite projects. But sugar loaf is kind of a, uh, I want to say a backup to lacroma. Lacroma is where the main game is. We know mm -hmm. uh, the met test work is a lot likely to be more suitable to the to the Campina process. Um, but having said that, if if the sugar left uh, metallurgy works, uh, that's another quite large potential resource that, that come into into play, you know. And th there are other things we're looking at for sugar loaf four as well. Um, being such a fine graphite, it has a lot of other industrial applications as well. So, um, you know, there's there's a long long pathway uh, for sugar loaf. But to actually answer your question, I would hope we would get the initial results of the metallurgy in the next six months. Um, it's kind of a two-year metallurgy project we've planned for, but the commercial guys that are doing part of the project for us have a quick turnaround, and in the next six months, we start, should start to see what it's looking like. Yeah, perfect. And I, yeah, I agree. I mean, from from my perspective, it's just a nice bonus, right? I think that, yeah, I mean, the market, I mean, Lacroma is is where the success will be found for you guys. So, no, Mike, thank you. I mean, just short and sweet here, last word to you. Is there anything I'm missing that you'd like to talk about before we sign off? No, look, it's just that we've got our, our main aim of this drilling program was to increase our graphite resources. And I think we've got two good uh, opportunities to do that, both at Sugarloaf and Lacroma. Both have varying risks. Uh, Lacroma probably less so now that we know that the drilling's coming out quite positive. But um, mm. yeah, it's just a matter of watching this space as the results come in. <laughs> and that's always the most exciting thing for any retail investor is watching those nice, beautiful assays come and hit the news release, you know, day after day, week after week. So no, exciting, yeah, exciting few weeks and months ahead of us here. Mike, thank you for your time. And yeah, if you're interested, iTech Minerals, check, check it out. Mike is a good man and he's a good leader and there's a, it's a good project. Thank you for your time, Mike. Thanks, Matt. Always a pleasure. 